Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number seven, I believe, of the UPL. And we are up against Ultra Player and his West Virginia Minors now. Uh, before getting into really anything, uh, I do just kind of want to uh, explain why I didn't have a week six. I'm not going to have a week six match at all. And that was against uh, Diet Tight. It was meant to be against Diet Tight. And uh, that was a pretty awkward situation. It's completely on me. I forfeited the match. Without getting into like too much detail, we were both going to play each other in the ICBA as well as the uh, UBL in the same week. It worked itself out really well. So we were just going to do a double header, right? So back to back. And I had two teams built, two fully fledged teams built. And that was actually going to be the uh, Perugly's debut. But uh, we played ICBA first. He just decided that we were going to play that one first. So we did. And uh, after we finished that match, uh, I was a little bit frustrated and... Uh, he told me that he was going to uh, go eat and go watch a a Kelly match a, uh, under the radar. Great, great friend. Uh, we're going to be meeting each other at Balloon Worlds, but uh, that's a sad boy. So he, he was going to watch a Kelly match, and then we, we would reconvene for round two in like an hour or two. And at that point, I was frustrated. It was late at night, and uh, I just really didn't feel like playing Pokemon at that point. I, I felt like playing Pokemon, but not uh, waiting an hour or two to play Pokemon. So uh, I just forfeited the match, gave it to him, and we compared teams after we kind of decided on, on what we were going to do. And uh, I really, really like the way that my build interacted with his. Um, I pretty strongly think that I could have won that match if we had played it out, but uh, it was not really uh, something that I was in the mood for that night. So it's going to be what it is. I apologize to everybody. For not having a match in and i'm kind of just uh bitching out about it but regardless we're here against ultra player and he, he has a really strong team against mine and as a cell sealer which i love to death i love cell to death um thunderous mesprit florges steelix and the tentacruel so right off the bat really scary threats but uh, a handful of things that I would have expected him to bring, right? So, no Alolan Persian, which means that uh, Photon Geysers are going to be reasonably free. And uh, no Mega Sceptile, which I really did expect because it kind of had a decent matchup against my team. It had an okay matchup against my team. But also, more surprising, no Legendrod Dusk and no Porygon Zed. So, uh, just some interesting things to hold back. I, I felt like it hel he held back a lot of uh, offensive pressure that those two would have provided. But, um... Other than that, I, I have a pretty defensive team myself. I don't have the strongest uh, team here, but I do have a Bandit Azumarill. Again, it was a Randy HLD uh, suggestion, and I kind of wanted to force myself to play with it more offensively because it, it's more offensive of a build than I would normally run with, but uh, I want to force myself to play with it offensively, so I kind of lead off with it. Uh, I feel like it's a solid anti-lead, and, it can, and it, it can have a decent matchup against a lot of his team, so I thought it would be a fun uh, lead matchup. And... But you guys can see from this team preview that he's, uh, it's not going to be the best lead matchup for me. But uh, I have a Rocky MZ Nihilego. Um, Randy was mentioning to me uh, before and after the match that I probably should have brought uh, Z Poison instead. And uh, maybe now that I look at the overall matchup, uh, probably that's true. But uh, when I was building it, it felt right to me. But regardless, that's for another time. Uh, I do have a Registeel. A uh, pretty standard Registeel, but uh, one thing that I do like about this Registeel, normally uh, he could build a Celesteela that could sub up on my uh, Registeel, and I think it can hit 204 HP, so it can uh, create a sub and not, and I can't break the sub with Seismic Toss in that situation. So uh, I have Thunderbolt on this Registeel, which should break subs most of the time, assuming it's just like max HP. If I guess wrong, it's like max special defense as well, then you know I was never gonna break it anyway. So. It was a little bit of a, of, of a guessing game, but I felt like that gave me a decent matchup if you tried to sub up with the Celestia. But uh, other than that, other than that, uh, pretty standard Serena, um, a pretty much standard Spear Tomb, max defense, uh, pr primarily for the Lycanroc Dusk. It can be a pocket check to the Porygon Z. It can pivot around a few things. Uh, it, it might hold the Passimian back. Well, it did build all the Passimian back, maybe, but uh, who knows why he held the Passimian back. But that was definitely a mon that I was concerned about, so I thought this would be a decent uh, play against that, as well as a pretty standard Autotomize 3 attacks in the Charisma with Photon Geyser, Heat Wave, and... 
signal beam. And actually, uh, the one last thing that I'll mention before getting into the match is that we had to play this match on showdown, right? So uh, this was recreated. I recreated this myself by playing against myself on two DSs. Um, so there is like one or two turns that are a little bit different due to um, recreation issues. But actually, for the most part, um, this recreation should be really, really faithful to the original matchup. But uh, just as a note, this was a forced post comp because uh, I had to recreate this match and uh, it was originally played on showdown. So just there might be a little, a little bit of weirdness, but I'm pretty sure almost every uh, turn played out almost exactly right. There's just one or two things that I had to uh, adjust here and there, but it doesn't end up really mattering. But um, yeah, like I said, I am trying to play this Azumarill a little bit more aggressively than I would because it is banded and I just get this lead matchup really really wrong he leads with a thunderous and I'm already feel like on my toes I feel like I have to give up a lot of damage uh, to a thunderbolt on my registeel but I have to go out into my registeel right now and uh, it turns out he goes for the sludge wave on turn one so he was protecting against some sort of a switch in but um regardless and this is going to let me try to figure out what kind of Thunderous this is. And here we find out pretty darn early on that it's a nasty plot Thunderous. And uh, from here, it's really scary. I just get off, get off a Seismic Toss. I honestly didn't even think that this thing would want to see in. I thought there was a chance that this thing would be Scarfed. But if it was Scarfed, I don't know. He probably wouldn't have gone for the such way play. But regardless, he's going to be able to get a plus two um, Thunderbolt off. And I actually, I never get paralyzed in my original match, just as an FYI. It doesn't end up mattering too, too much. But uh, it, it, it's just funny that I got paralyzed off the Thunderbolt. Regardless... I got a seismic toss off. I figure I'm going to have to give up my Registeel, which is going to really suck. It's gonna, genuinely going to suck. But it is going to mean that um, this thing is going to be low enough for something else to be able to kind of handle it late, later on. And here, I try to see if I can catch him on anything. Uh, I tried to go into my Serena because I thought there was a chance that Serena would um, be able to take two hits. But uh, it never really made sense because you could always switch up to the Sludge Wave. But uh, ultimately, this arena didn't really have a role. And I felt like Registeel could have a little bit of a role for this later um, match here. But regardless, uh, get, get, giving up the Serena here felt right to me because uh, it, it, it also just forced this thing to take a little bit more um, life orb recoil. And I felt like I could be okay in this interaction here, right? Oh, you know what it is? I think I actually uh, might have calc out that those serena counts without life orb and i think it just messed me up but here i can go into this thing i can get off a free power gem and this is where i find out that this uh steelix is assault vested right this is just no damage that's what 10 percent. that is bananas for uh a nihi lego hit to just do that little on anything really but regardless i'm forced to go out i I kind of honestly assumed that he would want to go for rocks or something like that, but he just goes straight up for an Iron Head. And this kind of, I think, should reveal that he's Sheer Force, because that just does so much damage. I did not expect that to do that much damage at all. I'm pretty sure I'm like close to max defense, but regardless, I'm going to get a Liquidation off. And like I said, I knew that even if he did want to switch this in, this would do close to 40%, and it does actually exactly 40%. But uh, that was pretty wild, right? So, uh, oh, so it doesn't even look like I have that much Uh HP in that Azumar regardless, but uh, I will be able to go at, out into my Registeel, and he goes for the Toxic Spice. I kind of thought that he would go for a Sludge Bomb in that situation, but uh, it, I don't think this is too big a deal. I always have my Nihilego to kind of play around here, but uh, now that this thing is in, I feel pretty free to sack this off um, as long as my zoom roll is in a better position to kind of be able to take on a scene. Oh, and he knew that I was banded. Uh, he told me after the match, and, and I and I believe him in this case that he knew that I was banded, so he knew that he would be able to get toxic spikes up and basically kind of sack this uh, Santa Cruel or uh, play on me switching or sludge bomb it the following turn. Regardless, he, he felt safe because he knew that I was banded. But uh, I just... Oh, so I get fully paralyzed. I do get a seismic toss off on the uh, proper match, but it doesn't end up mattering. I, uh, I I give up 50 HP on, on the Tentacruel, but it's not going to matter for the larger scheme of the match. But regardless, he's going to take this opportunity to switch out into the uh, Steelix, which does eat a seismic toss, and it's going to allow me to be able to go into my Spirit Tomb, which unfortunately does have to get poisoned, but I think I can deal with it. I think I'll be okay. And he goes for the EQ, and I can kind of gauge damage. So he's going to find out right now that I am uh, pretty much max defense. And he's going to have to kind of feel me out right now and feel, and feel out what I'm going to try to do here. But I felt like my best play was just to go for a Will-O-Wisp. Because uh, it's it's already looking like this thing is going to be a huge, huge problem for me uh, in the larger scheme of the match, right? So 
Uh, I feel like I don't have anything that's really gonna take, that's really just gonna Oko this Steelix straight up. So I feel like um, just mitigating this thing's damage in the longer scheme of the match and letting me wear this thing down over time and uh, limiting its damage output, even though it is Sheer Force Iron Head doing just a bunch of damage uh, would be ideal for me. And, and heck, I, it means that I should be able to take a hit with a zoom run and hit it later on if I have to or, what, or whatever the case may be, right? So from here, uh, I felt free to just kind of try to wear this thing down with with a burn damage and dark pulse, but he ends up switching out into the uh, thunderous, and I get a KO on the switch in. So spirit dooms are already kind of pulling its weight, but regardless, uh, I don't think that mattered too too much. Um, that thunderous had already done more than enough for this match, and uh, he this was really just to get a free switch into a Celcilla. Now the Celcilla I didn't think was going to be the biggest deal in the world if I just let the spirit tomb go down. Um, it meant that I can try to start to do something with my knee Lego, at least get some big, big damage off on it so that uh, it would allow something else to come in. But I believe he gets the attack boost, which is honestly super duper scary. But um, here, I think he actually is fearing the... Uh, oh, and it lets me soak up Toxic Spikes as well. I think right now he's actually fearing the... Uh, Z Thunderbolt, but uh, I'm not Z Thunderbolt. I'm just uh, Rock Z, and I was hoping to get a big hit off on it. But uh, I think he knew that I was trying to go for some sort of a th Thunderbolt move. I think he honestly thought that it was Z Thunderbolt, but um, it will allow me to go back in my Reggie Steel. And uh, here's where being paralyzed might have mattered. No, it, it, it doesn't matter. So in the original match, actually, he clicks Earthquake just like this happens, and uh, he crits me, and my Reggie Steel goes down. So. Uh, I don't, I'm gonna have to think about whether or not this matters, but uh, this actually would have let me get one more seismic toss right now. Let this thing get lowered a, a little bit more, and then uh, and then go down to to the earthquake. But because Rage Steel is paralyzed as well, it means that I can't even outspeed. So uh, it's not gonna matter in the recreation at all. But uh, for the sake of the original match, if he if I was not crit and I wasn't paralyzed either, then I think this. Uh, Steelix would have pretty much uh, gone down here, but he ends up preserving it as I bring in the, the Necrozma, and I feel like this would have been a good moment for me. Oh, he probably expected a heat wave in this moment, but this is going to allow me to autonomize up right now because I felt like uh, he would either switch out or the burn Steelix wouldn't do too much damage to me, so I can set it for free and I can try to start to make things happen because I already feel like I'm in the hole right now, and I feel like, I, like I said, I just need to make something happen right now. Um, that's going to put me in a position later in the match. So here again, um, because of the seismic toss that I never got off, um, this thing ends up a lot healthier than it would have, than it was in the original match. In the original match, it was closer to like 50 percent, but uh, it doesn't matter because Photon Guys is going to KO anyway. Now here, uh, I did a little um, bit of switching around. In the original match, he just goes straight into, into the Mesprit, and the Mesprit actually misses two consecutive Toxics in the original match. Uh, as I signal beam, and signal beam was a 3 KO through, through the leftovers, and um, what I did to try to recreate it a little bit was go into the Florges, switch out into um, into the Mesprit to get a free hit off, and then I was going to click the weakest moves Zen Headbutt on this Mesprit uh, to try to re recreate a little bit of, of the damage. It, it would have gotten a little bit of extra damage on Necrozma, but the signal beam ends up picking up a... A confusion in the recreation so from here uh, again in the original match he did miss two toxics but it, the net result is the same by a little bit of switching around and a, a confusion so uh, from there uh, I get the mess we're down for absolutely free this and didn't have, didn't have to give up anything to take that thing out but now I get to kind of gauge damage against this Florges and I can see just how bulky it is man oh my god even just watching this recreation back um, it is bananas how much damage that is not doing. And the Moonblast in return does 40-ish percent. And it's just bananas. Forges is a monster, man. But I'm going to try to make something happen, right? I'm going to at least try to wear this thing down enough so that um, I can set something up in the later game. I can threaten with the Lego. I can start to do something, maybe, later on. But then he reveals that he's Wish Protect. So his only attack move might just be Moonblast in honesty, which really makes me regret letting my Registeel get worn down. But um, spoiler alert, he is Mono Moonblast, uh, Switch Protect, Defog, and Moonblast. So I think Registeel would have completely hardwalled this thing. But for right now, 
uh, I just kind of have to deal with it not being here and uh, letting my necrozma get lowered. So here I kind of uh, switched out into my um, into my Nihilego, expecting him to want to just KO me. I can take a Moonblast really easily, but he ends up going for the Wish, right? So because he went for the Wish, it makes me think that he's going to protect this next turn and especially not risk me just sludge waving it into this thing at 50-ish percent, right? Which made me think that I could get in my Azumarill for absolutely free. Um, which he did protect, and I felt really good about getting my Azumarill in. But, uh, now I can get off a Bandit Liquidation, and here's where he has a really obvious sack with his Steelix, which obviously he's going to give up to my, to my Azumarill. And here's where a lot of my... Here's why my brain is just going crazy over thinking about how to play this in-game, because... He has the floor just left and the cell seal left. I 100% need this Azumarill for the, um, for the floor just, but I can give up my, my Nihilego to get some damage off on this, uh, cell seal and then try to clean up the game with Azumarill. But, uh, as I switch out trying to sack off Necrozma, he goes for an Autotomize, right? And... Honestly, that just kind of sealed the match from here. He's going to be able to heavy slam three times and KO the rest of my team. But um, I think in my head, I think what I was thinking in my head was if I can sack off the uh, Necrozma to the Celcilla, then then uh, this thing can come in, get a whole lot of damage off with Thunderbolt, and then hopefully put Azumarill in a position where it can try to clean up the match, but uh, realistically thinking back on it, um, or maybe I did have it in reverse, maybe I thought that uh, doing this would allow in my zoom roll, then I could look at and then I can clean up with Winnie Lego, regardless of how it would have played out. Um, yeah, no, that, that has to be what I thought because this uh, zoom roll is way too low to, to ever clean up this match. So uh, that's probably what I had in my head. Um, I can get a strong liquidation off with my zoom roll and then I can uh, bring in my my Nihilego to Thunderbolt, the Celcilla. Ideally, get a Beast Boost, and then at plus one, I can 1v1 the Forges, and then go on from there to hopefully win. But him uh, calling out my Switch and going for the Autonomize genuinely just won in the gadget. That was a game-winning play right there, uh, and there really wasn't much that I could do against that at that point. Um, I felt like I had to be bold in that Switch, but if I had... If I had just attacked into it, then I guess, I don't know. I would have had to have taken a heavy slam, right? And it would have been a question whether or not I can take a heavy slam. But if I can take a heavy slam, then two banded uh, liquidations into the Celesteela would have um, been interesting. Maybe I KO and then maybe I and then maybe I do something for the for the end of the match. But who knows, man? I have no idea what would have happened in the end of that match. Uh, him clicking Autotomize... Um, it was very surprising to me. I, I don't think he, he'd even revealed Autonomize up to that point. And uh, I thought I had to play the endgame perfectly. I thought I had to really call that switch and really um, maneuver around. But he absolutely called that endgame. And uh, that's going to be how he wins the match. Uh, with that, that's going to be uh, Week 7 with a kind of Week 6 recap as well. So uh, from here, I will get Week 8 out re reasonably soon. And then... Uh, week nine will be on friday as i believe on schedule and uh with that thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back re really really soon with more weeks of the ubl more weeks of the icba more weeks of the pdp league war and um uh, more stuff out to come but once again thank you guys so much for watching and everyone's again out